Here is an excellent example in which we are going to learn a new strategy for finding range of rational function without calculus using simple concepts of quadratic equation. I hope you find it interesting. Thank you. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we will learn how do we find range of a rational function. It is normally very difficult to find range without calculus. Since we are not very sure about the turning points, perfect, right? So here is a very special technique which will help you to find range of rational functions. Now here is a very important test question which I am sharing with you. Let me thank my viewers and subscribers for this particular question. The problem here is to determine the range of the function y equals to x square minus 2x plus 3 divided by x square plus 2x minus 3. You can always pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Well, in case you want to learn from me, you can send an email on the address given. Most of my students are doing extremely well. Now, let's look into the solution of this problem. We are given y equals to x square minus 2x plus 3 divided by x square plus 2x minus 3. Finding range is to find possible y values, right? Does make sense, right? Therefore, the strategy here is to cross multiply. So, we are going to multiply with y the denominator which is x square plus 2x minus 3 and so we get our equation as on the right hand side we are left with x square minus 2x plus 3. Bringing all the terms together we can rewrite this as x square plus 2x minus 3 minus x square plus 2x minus 3 equals to 0. Well now we can actually write the terms as in the quadratic form. Uh, we can write this we have y x square and minus x square. So I'll prefer to write this into the quadratic form with x square just open and rewrite. So, as far as the x square coefficients are concerned, we have y and minus 1. You see that. So, now we can actually rewrite this equation as y x square minus x square, right, plus 2x times y. And here we have plus 2x, correct? Then we have minus 3y and here we have minus 3 equals to 0. Now you see we could actually rewrite this as a quadratic equation with coefficients involving y, right? So if I take x square common, I get y minus 1 times x square. Here we can take x common, right? So we have 2y plus 2 with x common and in this case, we can take minus, uh, we have minus 3y plus 3, right? 3y plus 3 equals to 0. Now, we understand the concepts of quadratic equation. A quadratic equation of the form y equals to ax square plus bx plus c will have roots, real roots, only if the discriminant is non-negative, right? So, discriminant which is b square minus 4ac is greater than or equal to 0, correct? Now, in our case, if you compare, what do you see? Well, as far as b is concerned, b is 2y plus 2, right? a is y minus 1, and c is minus of 3y plus 3, correct? 
So, b square minus 4ac should be greater than or equal to 0. Only then we have real roots and that will give us the range, the y values for the given function. Does make sense to you? Perfect. So, now when you have the idea, pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. So, let's take it on the next page. So, b square minus 4ac means 2y plus 2 whole square. Let me rewrite here. So, we have 2y plus 2 whole square minus 4 times the value of a which is basically y minus 1, right? And c which is 3y plus 3 with a negative sign, right? 3y plus 3 with a negative sign, so it becomes plus, correct? Since uh, we have this with the negative sign here, right? So, we have, we could add this up and now that should be greater than or equal to 0. Makes sense. So, that is what we need to simplify and then find the answer, right? So, some uh, work required to be done here. Let's expand and simplify this. Whole square means 4y square, right? plus 2ab means 8y plus 4. Multiplying with 4, we have 4y minus 4 times 3y plus 3, right? Greater than or equal to 0. So, we have 4y square plus 8y plus 4. 4y times 3y will give us 12y square and then we have 4y times 3, we have plus 3 times 4 is 12y. Multiplying with minus 4 gives us minus 12y and then we have minus 12 greater than or equal to 0, correct? Let's now combine the terms. 4y and 12y gives us 16y square. The y terms 8 12y minus 12y cancels, so we have plus 8y. The constant terms, we have 4 and minus 12, which means minus 8 should be greater than or equal to 0. So, we can factor out 8 from here, right? So, we get 2y square plus y minus 1 greater than or equal to 0, correct? So, we have 2y square plus y minus 1 greater than 0, which can be written as, let me just draw a line here, continue this side, correct. Let's change the ink also, so it is 8 times, you could factor this as 2y minus 1, right, times y minus 1, greater than equal to 0, correct, y plus 1, sorry. So, 2y minus 1 times y plus 1, greater than equal to 0, correct. Now, when is this positive, when is this negative? So, to figure this out, we can actually roughly sketch this. You know, the roots are at minus 1 and plus half, right? So, the graph will look like this, something like minus 1 and plus half, correct? Which means, this is like minus 1 and this is like half, correct? So, we see that it is positive or you can say non-negative on the right side of half and on the left side of minus 1, correct? So, that gives you possible values for y from here. You get the idea. And therefore, now we can conclude the range. Can you tell me what should be the range now, right? So, range is, in this case, y belongs to all real numbers so that y is either less than minus 1, right? Or y is greater than or equal to half. Makes sense, right? So, you get an idea, right? So, that is how we can find the range of the rational function given to us. So, that becomes the range for the rational function. Is this concept clear to you? So, to get the range of a rational function, the steps involved are Multiply with y, write down the quadratic equation in x and then check the discriminant and if the discriminant is 
non-negative, then we get the possible values of y. So the restrictions are very clearly seen. You can also use a table to check the values for positive and negative intervals, right? But sketching a graph is much simpler as shown here. I hope it makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.